everybody. How y'all doing? What you got going on? <laughs> yeah, that's Miss B. Technical difficulties. With that being said, welcome to Leader's Voice this Sunday with my special guest, my friend, my buddy, my pal, my mentor, uh, Brenda Coles. Welcome again. Hey, lady. How you doing, Miss B? Good to be back. I've been on that high edits, feeling good, but I'm glad to be back on the show. We both have had a hiatus and you had a short mini vacay and you deserve it. So um, and this is the summertime. It's, 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 it's our time to do what we need to do. But I'm excited. Every time you come on, we have a topic that's very worthy of discussion. And today we're going to talk about landlord issues, tenant rights. And I'm excited about that because especially now uh, with COVID and all of these evictions and people losing their jobs and, you know, and then the management thinks, oh, I got you over a barrel. I can do whatever I want to do. Where else you going to go? I mean, there's a lot of things that we are facing. When I say we, I'm talking about, you know, humanity are facing based on the economic status of the world right now that everybody is doing good so for you to bring this topic i'm excited about it so everybody knows that you're brenda cole social activist and you go after them don't don't come in your territory no foolish you gonna go get them so what we're gonna get going today brenda well i'm gonna tell you you hit it right on the head first of all um uh miss b with this with the moratorium eviction uh, that's ending and nothing has um, come to the floor uh, as of yet, for those that are millions that are up for eviction, um, what I want to talk about today, and that's that's just one issue that many people have to deal with right now. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's going to be an individual issue there because you do have a lot of you do have uh, millions of people that have been doing everything they can to pay their rent in this time of COVID. Uh, a lot of the calls that also have that I have received personally are people that also have taken advantage of the situation. And you know what? That hurts so much of those that are truly um, trying to uh, have a roof over their head. And then I think this is where, where I'm going today is I want to make everyone aware of what um, what uh, um, landlords are doing. Um, when you're going out and trying to find a place to live. Uh, a lot of property, and I'm going to speak specifically of one that I have worked with over the last uh, month or so uh, that are truly uh, misrepresenting themselves and have are cheating and discriminating against people, specifically people of color. Um, and uh, first of all, I just want to make sure people be aware. When you are renting right now, and you're going out to rent, or even just finding a place right now. Be very vigilant. Do not accept anything unless you see it in person. Um, one property that I went back and forth with and had to get two tenants out is Greenbrier Property Management. They are located out of Williamsburg, Virginia. Now, let me say this. Greenbrier Management they have a lot of properties in the state of Virginia and they have properties outside of the state of Virginia. So it's a big company. And, um, and, um, and they got 14 properties here in central Virginia. So you want to know who the property management company is when you apply, make sure you pay very close attention to that. They have nine in Eastern Virginia. They have four in Southeastern Virginia. Virginia, and they have four in Western Virginia. Um, and um, there was one particular, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on a couple issues that uh, I fought with uh, Greenbrier over just in writing letters to their attorney and was able to get the uh, tenant out without penalties. Um, now, one particular um, situation um, the young lady, she was actually supposed to be on, on the call with me today, the tenant or the prior tenant, the ex-tenant, but she is traveling. But um, she moved in first of June. She could not see the unit, even though she had been calling since. The, no, she could not see the unit. Everything had to be done online. Not only that, but Greenbrier advertises remodeled properties on their, on, on, on their website. And then you assign, you have to sign the lease 
online. And they're going to tell you that they can't show it to you. If you go to the property, they're going to tell you, in most cases, they can't show you the property because it's not available. Well, she signed the lease. Yes, indeed. She signed the lease online. She still continued to ask to see the property. And they did not show it to her. They told her that when she come in to pay the deposit, that they and then when she went in to pay the deposit, she still wasn't shown the property. They just gave her a key. She went into this property, and when she went in, it was not the unit that, that she thought she paid for. It was not a remodeled unit. Oh, they got a beautiful remodeled unit that's showing on the website, but I don't even think that unit exists. <laughs> and then when I went to the property, you can see from a door, they got maybe two or three of those units, but even those units that they showed that's remodeled, they got major problems. They have water leakage problems from the roof. And they, she had a huge guy. She wasn't even there a month, wasn't even there 20 days when she contacted me. The roof and the ceiling in the kitchen was on the floor. The, the child's bedroom had a hole, huge hole in her closet. The child fell through the hole. Had the pipes not caught her, she would have went through the kitchen and died and possibly died. Let's put it that way. She had a gas leak and it showed all brand new appliances. No, no appliances brand new. The um, Columbia Gas had to come in and red tag her soap. She had no soap. So she had to buy appliances to even cook for her child. Absolutely. The front door is rotten. The seal in the front and the back door had tape, tape down the um in the middle of the seam of the door. I kid you not. The we got pictures, we took pictures of everything. It was disgusting it was a condemned building in my opinion it was mold all throughout the unit the, the, the front glass of the door uh, i mean of the, one of the windows in the living room was cracked all the way across they had clear tape lining the window <laughs> you can't make this up the back door threshold had a huge hole in it it was rotten her child's foot went in through the hole. I mean, I can literally go on and on and on about this property. And so they would, they, um, they, they would not let her out of a lease, even though she asked to be let out of a lease. So I stepped in and went through the unit, wrote a letter. Um, he did an ex excellent job. I want to tell everyone right now. Keep record. Stop calling people without putting it in writing. Because when you call, it never happens. Um, this young lady is brilliant. Name, and, and, and actually, she actually works with me now because she is so brilliant by the way she handled the situation. She kept everything in writing. She took pictures of everything. Um, when she put in all of these work orders, they sent the work orders back to her as if they were completed. They hadn't even done anything. <laughs> yes, indeed. The property manager sent the work orders back, completed. Hadn't even done one thing in her unit. They had um, duct tape wrapped under the sink in the kitchen. Duct tape was wrapped around the pipes, holding the pipes. She had to call Columbia Gas out there several times. Fire department had to come out because there was a burning smell under the crawl space, which was left wide open. This is Colonial Courts in Colonial Heights, Virginia. They got another property that just is damaging and worse. And, that's, uh, and that property is um, Summit Point in Petersburg. Now, Summit Point was in the news recently, actually, about their conditions. It was all owned by the same people or all managed by the same people and they are nasty. But the, uh, one of their lawyers, uh, answered the, uh, our complaint and 
um, well, actually, the first person we spoke with was the regional manager. And um, very nasty, very, very nasty. Want to say that, well, it takes time. We've never been through COVID. They blame COVID for the reason of not making repairs. COVID was the reason they wasn't making repairs. Um, not I had to unmute myself because I want you to get all of your points across. But number one, is COVID to blame for the condition of the apartment that they chose to give her without her taking her to? Everybody gets the opportunity to, to look at the property before they sign a lease. And, uh, is COVID to blame for duct tape, broken windows, rotten ceiling, and molding? That mold, it takes a while for all that it stuff takes, to happen. Absolutely. COVID ain't had nothing, to do, with had nothing to do with it. They, there's stop. been complaints about this, this particular um, uh, uh, company for many years. It had nothing to do with COVID. But see, they black, the, the low income black people or white people that that need to find somewhere to live or people of, in, of color because they got they got different nationalities. But you're not going to have at, you is majority white. I mean, black majority of it is black. You can you can bet your bottom dollar on that. You also have other nationalities um, um, that other than white that's in these properties. So that's who they're going to put in these properties. OK, so. Someone that, and that you know, and see the other thing is this: they don't take people that have to have good credit. So if your credit is bad and you don't have where to, where to live, then you're gonna settle and you're not gonna make noise about it. But no one has to live like that. What I want to do, like I say, just through letter writing, through advocacy of letter writing, we were able to get her moved out without penalty, and she was able to get. Not just her uh, rent back, but all her also her security deposit. We was able to get that back. Her next door neighbor then contacted me. She been there for three years. Three years. She had a disabled child. She had been moved out of her unit since March because the place is in such poor um, living conditions, dangerous living conditions because her child has breathing problems. We got her out of her lease without penalties. So now I think she, I don't know if she decided to go on and into another property with them, I'm not sure, but we were able to get her out of that condition in which she was in. So I want people to understand this. First of all, you're gonna have a lot of people targeting people right now because renters are really seeking places to live. A lot of people have sold their homes because this is a buy, this is a buyer's market and people are renting. Okay. So you're going to have a lot of this going on, but if, if, if your place, if you walk in your place and you can't live there and it's dangerous, there's a couple things that you can do. Number one, if, if they're not giving you anything in writing that, um, that they are coming over, and they need to give you some notice before just sending people into your home that do not speak English to try to make repairs and say, where do you need repairs made when you've sent in a work order? If they don't know what they're doing at your home, then you need to you need to write a report. You can also I want to encourage everybody file with code and compliance, a complaint and also your building um, down in your, your county or city of where you live. Do not live in those conditions. You do not have to. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your credit is. Do not live in those conditions. Do not allow these companies to take advantage. If they're taking advantage of you, they're taking advantage of everyone. That could be your mother, your grandmother. If they are ill and they haven't and they're living in these conditions, you need to be concerned. And so I have been very busy with these with these housing issues right now. People are going to have a lot of especially now with this eviction moratorium. People are going to have a lot of issues with housing. And unfortunately, um, legal aid of such Virginia got very little help with attorneys as a volunteering. I spoke with someone um, with with the agency some time ago on other on uh, with with people that have been calling me and. They only had three attorneys of uh, all of these cases that they got coming in. And you literally have to almost be on the street for them to even take the case. 
So a lot of people are going to have a lot of problems and they're going to need a lot of help. But you're going to have to also start understanding what your laws is. All you do need to Google it, read it and understand it. Don't just think you're supposed to take it anywhere. And people that anybody that's with Greenbrier Management, um, 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 a company out of win, please be aware that these people, their practices, they have deceptive, they have deceptive practices. And they will take you to court in a minute. Now, um, what they do, and this is what I've noticed they've done with some residents. They take you to court um, and they also get possession of the property, but they don't put you out. They want to make a deal with you. But see, you got to understand, because they tried to do that with, um, the, with the person that I work with. Not to take her to court, but make a deal with her. Well, we'll put you in another property. They took us over to look at, and we were able to go over to look at Summit Point. And it was a remodeled property. They remodeled property and the property itself looked worse than where she was at. Brenda, it how was did, disgusting. How did um, this young lady that you helped uh, with the child that fell through, how did she get in contact with you? Well, um, she she got in contact me, with me through someone that she knew. Uh, and so she, um, she and that's how she got in contact with me through someone she knew. She called me up and I was able to assist her that way. Uh, so uh, and it was despicable. I was on I was um, we actually did a, a story on it. Uh, um, um, WTVR actually did a, a story, came in, took the pictures. Uh, they were shocked. Uh, and I, I don't know actually what happened. I know they was waiting to get a resolve. We did get a resolve, but sometimes, uh, and I believe uh, at that time, this, the they was uh, running low on staff. They hadn't read, ran the story. Um, I'm hoping they will eventually run that story because this is not the first time. It won't be the last. Um, we She actually got several calls even after that with other people that live there because they didn't think that they could fight this company and become successful. And people got to understand, you don't have to, there are laws that these property management have to be able to go through. You can take them to court. And if they're not fixing your property, don't stop paying rent. That's the biggest mistake most people make. Well, I'm not going to pay rent until you fix this. No, you cannot do that. That's illegal. You take it to the court and that city or county and you uh, put it in escrow. Put the money in escrow. It's going to then get a court date and you can go in front of a judge and explain, take pictures, take pictures. And you um, when you take those pictures and you explain and make sure you have all your documents that you actually reported that situation. And so you can be able to show the judge what you've been dealing with for X amount of time. Well, congratulations on your ability to assist anyone with this situation, but especially the first young lady that we talked about. Um, I know you don't want to just say no, but you don't want to say yes either. Is there anyone else out there advocating for tenant rights? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm almost positive that there will definitely will be. Uh, there, there are. Um, but um, and, you know, and of course, I'm always I always got my ear on the ground. I do know that um, of course, you do. You have a lot of people out there. I just don't know to what degree. Now, the now uh, surprising to me, I was able through through my through my letter writing um, to be able to assist. And I'm gonna tell you, um, the young lady herself, um, she did a magnificent job of keeping notes. So it wasn't very difficult in order to write up the timeline to be able to help her. Uh, but what people do have to understand, uh, and whomever is helping. With tenant rights, um, is that you you need to make sure that you're keeping notes, you're and you're keeping a timeline. A lot of people just pick up the phone and keep calling and calling and calling. Well, you got to understand, a phone call is fine, but unless you have it in writing, it never happened. Exactly, and that's exactly what people are going to say. I didn't get your call. I don't get your recording. It never happened. So you got to remember that. And and not to cut across you, but if you're going to send them a 
email, that's fine too, but snail mail and they have to sign for it. That right. is an excellent um, track record. But if they decide to reach out to you, is there a fee? Is there a time that you um, are only available to work on certain cases? Tell them about that. Oh, no. Oh, never a fee. I mean, you know, as community, as community activists, uh, a, um, and there's never a fee. Oh, no, 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 no. Even with, uh, you know, what I do as, as with Nan, it's never a fee. Uh, but so, uh, because that's not what we do. Uh, when you are volunteering your time to help others to, and, and, and this is about also helping others be, it, become empowered. This is what we all supposed to be doing as civil rights activists is helping others to be in, empowered to say, see, you don't always have to run to an attorney. Okay, a lot of people waste money on attorneys, in my, in my opinion, of something that they can do themselves. But you have to be willing to do the work. This young lady happened to be, a, to, to be willing to do the work. What happened with the second lady is basically benefited from the first successful case. So, um, but that's okay, because what we want to do is show the company, and we use the same format for the second a case. However, she was there for three years. We still use the same format um, of being able to show the danger that her the family was in living in that, in my opinion, condemned space um, so that they can go ahead to and get her moved out without having to um, retaliate because that's what a lot of them do. And I want you all to be aware of that is, is retaliate. I can still be, I'm, I'm, of course, you can reach me at um, 804-426-6308. That is my cell that um, you can always be able to reach me at. So if you do have a question, call, give me a call. Um, and um, and because I'm going to talk to you, see what your circumstances. As I said, I get a lot of phone calls. In this time of, of, of COVID and what has been going on with renters, um, now, you do you have a lot of people that don't understand where you've kind of taken advantage of a situation. So I can't help you when you take advantage. But when you're being mistreated or discriminated or being violated, oh, give me a call because I'm certainly going to do everything I can to help you. Absolutely. So that being said, we're going to take a short break because we have something else we want to discuss. So just bear with us. <laughs> Welcome, welcome back, everybody. You've been listening to um, my, I mean, she's just an amazing young woman. I, I do. She has a lot going on. But these tenant rights, you just heard uh, Brenda Coles discuss a couple of cases that she's working on. And to tell you what your, uh, I guess you can say, your op options are when it comes to dealing with landlord issues. And you do have tenant rights. So thank you for that. Uh, Willie X. Brown says, divine rising, Miss B. And says, Brenda, for sharing this important matter on how people are being mistreated. You're absolutely right. And that's what Brenda does. She comes with me um, prayerfully the first Sunday of every month with different topics or sometimes a continuation. And, you know, if there's something going on in your life, whether it's tenant issues or otherwise, she's given her phone number out. Please reach out to her as a community activist for many years. Uh, nothing new under the sun for her. But that being said, you just saw a short clip of me, Miss B, positively Miss B. I have a show, TV show. That's right. Every Friday morning, 9 a.m. East Coast time on the Preach the Word uh, Network. I'm also on DirecTV. I'm on Roku. I'm on Daystar, 9 a.m. East Coast time. TV, that's me. You can also find me on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, which is Positively Miss B. I simply use scriptures and ask you if it's true. How's it working for you? That's what I do. I use a scripture, talk about it. If you say you believe in it, how's it working for you? So thank you so much for your support. So Brenda, speaking of support, I understand that you have an event coming up pretty soon. Would you like to share that? Oh, absolutely. I am so, um, I am just so uh, excited. Um, it's just, I, I, until I, it's just keeps me smiling. And uh, we do, um, uh, the, the chapter, we are having a, a uh, it's called a Evening with Changemakers Banquet. Uh, 
It's going to be on August the 21st from 5 to 9. We, ha we are having it at the event, e event Center at Sharon Baptist Church, uh, which is at East 500 La Burma Avenue. Uh, we're excited about this because um, I've had a magnificent um, team of people in our community, community activists, um, our youth, our young people, adults that is committed and dedicated to truth and justice. And that's what it's all about. If we, and they are committed in, at all costs. If I pick up the phone and say, we gotta go because we have a case, they are there with me. If I say, I, we got some volunteer work we need to do, they are there. And not only that, but we got some courageous young people that have done some magnificent work. And uh, Ms. B, what you often find in and, and rather it's in whatever a group, organization, um, you know, business, whatever the case may be, the same people are always recognized. I just, um, I just don't agree with that. People, everybody have all did something fantastic, most of the time that you don't even know about. But, and what, what we're doing is we recognizing those people. Um, you know, you got a lot of people to get all these accolades. Uh, no, we got people that need to be that are deserving of their of what they have done and be noticed and heard of, of the great work. And not only that, but the steps that they took, the brave steps that they took in order for us to continue doing our job. This is extremely important. And so that's why I'm ex, uh, excited about the change, the evening with change makers. I want to uh, let our uh, viewing audience know that our wonderful a fantastic host will be this magnificent lady sitting next to me, Miss D. And not only that, but she's an honoree. So, oh, absolutely. I just want you to know, I wanted to surprise you today and let you know you are an honoree. Um, and I want to talk about our honorees because, Miss B, you do, you do so much. When we bring in um, information to the community on what it is they can do, how they can be empowered, how they can build. You not, and that's not a lot of people that's bringing what you bring. So you are deserving. You are deserving of that. I want to thank you of that. You are not just a host. You're doing double duty that day. Just remember that now. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> but I want to also just announce our honorees for that for that evening. Um, we just got some fantastic people. Uh, I wish Lord knows there's so many people that I, I would can name that that is truly deserving of even uh, um, that I would love to get honors to. But the honorees for that evening are Bernadette Lark, Winter Giovanni, Brother Willie X Brown, Sister Versailles Webb, Sister Mary Ann Champ, Brother Damien D D Long D. Delon, I can never pronounce Damien's last name, <laughs> but I will have it spelled correctly. I promise. <laughs> we have Sister Francine Williams. We have one of our young brothers that is just absolutely dynamite. His name is Brother Otis Robinson, and another dynamic youth. I mean, she's 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 only seven years uh, seven years young, and that is Celeste Miller. We have another you, another um, dynamic team. It's Carter Oscanyan. Uh, we have Sister. Oh, everybody knows about Sister Lily Branch Kennedy, and this this is one sister that does not get the accolades that she is so deserving. And um, and then we have, like I say, Miss Benita. We, I've already said you. I want to say your name again with Miss ben, Miss B or Miss Benita Claiborne. <laughs> we also have our brother Chaplain Victor Pate, and we have our sister, Dr. Kimberly Holloman, another, another strong sister, another strong sister. And Miss B, we got to get her on the show. Dr. Her Holloman and, has her a and, story. Her and we Lily. got to get Dr. Holloman and, the, and what she has done to, to, on civil rights how she has stood up and how she was treated for standing up for our black children that are being called the n-word and she was retaliated against so we definitely got to get our sister dr kimberly holloman 
that have been um, in education for 20 plus years and the way that she was treated. We also have, uh, we have a dynamic teacher. We have so many teachers that really are doing, I mean, fantastic work, fantastic work in our schools. And um, um, Susan Hester, uh, she is, I have never seen a teacher that takes all children under their wing the way that she does and treats those children like they're her own. I mean, literally treats those children like that they're her own and teach them the way that she does. She is a dynamite teacher. And I just felt that she had definitely is deserving of a, um, she, cause she's make the changes she's make in students. She's definitely deserving. And then we have our sister, uh, Vanessa Johnson. And, and this is another sister. And the hard work that she has done with our, our young people on the college campuses. I mean, this is what I'm saying. We got so many deserving people. And then we're at voters' rights and getting people registered to vote and getting that, that out. This sister is so dynamic and making sure that we are getting to the polls and getting us to edu the, the, the educational information so we can pass it on. Sister Johnson does that. And so I'm excited. I'm excited of what it is we're doing. And also just want to give everybody our invited guests that we, um, that we um, most of them that, that I'm naming, naming are just confirming uh, uh, invited, uh, invited guests. We are still working on a few, but we have a candidate term of color um, campaign. We have Attorney General and candidate Mark Herring. We have Attorney Kush Shukala. We have Delegate, um, let me, let me say, I, I believe Delegate um, Jay Jones was maybe sending out a surrogate. I ha do have to check on that because it just hit me. I think we just got an email on that one. We have Senator Jennifer McCullen. Uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Dolores Dungey Anderson. We have uh, Ms. Clovia Lawrence. Uh, we have, and, and I want to thank, um, and so we're going to certainly uh, thank uh, pa uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Reverend um, uh, Paul Coles with Sharon Baptist Church uh, for allowing us to utilize their event center space for this banquet. It's going to absolutely be beautiful. And, there are those, and then we're going to also want to um, thank Reverend Dr. Um, Michael Felton and First Lady Faith Felton um, for all the work and all the help that they all to also have assisted us with uh, putting together this, this banquet. So this is truly a collaborative effort. Um, we have um, and one other sister I gotta uh, mention that has been so dynamic in the help and that is um, Sheila Davis. Uh, and that sister have also just been so dynamic. I, I got to mention these people for the simple fact that the, um, this type of work is not easy. And when people are not feeling good or uh, things are going on in their life, they got families and they still stop and say, no, this is worthy. This is needed. Um, so I, I want to give you that list, but we certainly have more coming um, that I definitely want to. I want to give out some names. We had a lot of invited guests. Every, everyone is we still got invited guests that are looking at their schedule to see if they can attend. So we it, it's no telling whom else we will have. But we went from already we went from I only scheduled it for 75 people and I'm already at 100. That's how many people. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm the hostess and I'm nervous. <laughs> yes. That yes, guess is, we, is no joke. We got we we scheduled. I only scheduled this to be for seven. And there are so many people I already had to say. And see, we're not selling tickets or anything. Um, if you know, if you was a man, if you were a man member, you're automatically on the list. Um, and if if someone said they're not going to be able to make it, I, I wanted to be able to be able to put someone else in. We don't even have that because we had so many people that want to be able to attend. That's a fantastic thing. Idiot. So we're excited. We're excited. I'm excited. And I want to talk about this a little bit further as we go, uh, possibly we get a little bit more information. And I want to mention something. Our keynote speaker, we 
cannot go without talking about a, a dynamic keynote speaker is going to be honorable um common shannon taylor commonwealth attorney for haranko county i am so excited about having commonwealth attorney shannon taylor as a keynote speaker and so we're going to have a dynamic time we also have cannot go without mentioning this as far as our entertainment we got two-time award uh, uh stellar nominee uh christian bolar 13 year old christian bolar that will be performing at the event along with um we have um, um uh, trumpetist angelicia rogers out of the lincoln Net jazz center of the new york that will also be playing uh her trumpet along with accompanying um um a, p a pianist with her out of uh, virginia state university so and she is virginia state is also our own alma mater but we are excited we got so many people that are excited and ready to go and we're gonna have a great time and we're gonna we're going to um we're going to celebrate these people now what is going to be very important for our um guests as special guests when we when we are speaking about um and when we're talking about um uh, uh, um candidate terry mcculloch campaign and attorney general mark herring um those uh, those delegates those can uh, those that are running for office we want to hear from them um we want to hear what's especially when it comes to our voting rights because the following week is the march on washington for john lewis voting rights bill so we need to hear from them we need to hear because our black community is very concerned right now and um and you know our vote is not just guaranteed like that so we need to also hear what are and we did invite both parties let me be very clear we invited both parties we i'm only talking about those that have accepted our invitation so it wasn't that we didn't invite the um both uh, uh glenn Lunkin's can youngkin's campaign as well his campaign have not responded so i want to i want to put that out to make the very clear that when you hear terry mccullough campaign have responded and attorney general mark herring's office have attorney we did all campaigns if you respond you respond if you didn't you didn't so i want to put that out but we want to hear from you because you are vining for our vote so we need to hear that voters rights bill is extremely important to us right now. Everything is going on in this country. We got 22, was it 23 states right now that is already is rolling back the voters rights, um, the voters rights, uh, voters rights protections. So those candidates need to be there and give us a few words about what it is that they're going to do in order to protect our right to vote in the state of Virginia. We mm. need that. So, um, and hopefully we'll be able to get them on the show at some point before the campaign gets too crazy. It's already, it's gonna kick in gear. It's normally, uh, I believe it's either August or September is when the campaigns really kick into gear with their touring. So hopefully we'll be able to also get them on the shows, uh, on the show, I must be. So we're gonna be reaching out to do that as well. But anyway, I just wanted to, uh, to talk about that just excited about it. I hope everybody's getting excited about it. And um, if you did, if you heard a name of someone you know, call them up and congratulate them because they are so deserving of this award. Um, and we do have someone from National that will be, that will be attending um, as well. So we're looking forward to that. So and I wanna thank you for allowing me to, to give that little spiel about this excitement that's in the air for me. I'm going to be also getting out a um, flyer for the bank. So we'll, we'll distribute that so people can keep it on their mind and just know the excitement that's going on. I'm excited. I, I, I'm in awe. Wait a minute. Not only am I invited, I'm the host. I am being honored and I'm among such distinguished guests that you have mentioned. I am just grinning all over myself. This is just such an honor and a privilege. And I want to take the time. I know we're, we're finished, but I just want to say the true honor for me is to have Brenda Coles as a friend, as someone who trusts my platform to deliver her message as it is 
worthy. And I just want to thank you personally, Brenda, for trusting me to represent you professionally at this event because I know how important it is to you. So everybody, Brenda Coles, if you don't know her, please follow her. If you have any rights that you feel that are violated and not just tenant rights, she has been a community activist for many years. I'm not going to say how many because she's so young. But that being said, I really am honored to be able to have her. <laughs> 40. That many, that many, Over wow. 40. Well, you know what? I'm 36. Yes, I am too. <laughs> you know, doesn't matter how many extras, but I'm always going to be 36. Put that in your mind. But that being said, uh, she's 40 and I'm 36. And we thank you so much for joining us. That's every Sunday ish, 1 p.m. East Coast time. A Leader's Voice with Linda Coles with various topics. And again, stay tuned for more information about her upcoming event on August the 21st. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, everybody, we thank you so much. And again, uh, reach out to her if you have any questions or concerns, or if you want to volunteer to help her volunteer. If you have information that can help other people to come overcome some of these issues, get in contact with her if you wanted to volunteer. So again, everybody, thank you so much. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.